March is not just March Madness. It is also the month in which we celebrate the achievements of women in all walks of life. This episode from the Space Vault will focus on a very special woman, Mary Golda Ross, first Native American aerospace engineer. She was a math prodigy who became both the first female and Native American Cherokee Nation engineer at Lockheed Aircraft Corporation. She helped develop the rocket technology that launched America into space and was involved in top secret aerospace technologies of the Cold War. Born on August 9, 1908 in Park Hill, Oklahoma, she was the great granddaughter of John Ross chief of the Cherokee Nation who served for 30 years. After high school, Ross attended Northeastern State Teachers College in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, now Northeastern State University. This college originally was the site of the Cherokee Female Seminary, one of the first educational institutions for women west of the Mississippi River and one funded by a tribe. Ross graduated in 1928 with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. She is quoted as saying, to function efficiently in today's world, you need math. The world is so technical, if you plan to work in it, a math background will let you go farther and faster. After graduation, she taught mathematics and science for almost 10 years in public schools. In 1937, she accepted a position as an advisor to girl students at the Santa Fe Indian School, a government-run boarding school for Native Americans in New Mexico. During summer breaks, Ross completed graduate coursework at Colorado State Teachers College, now the University of Northern Colorado, which culminated in a master's degree in mathematics. Like many other Native people, Ross answered the call to national service during World War II as commemorated in this poster for National American Indian Heritage Month. In 1942, she joined Lockheed Aircraft Corporation in Burbank, California as a mathematical research assistant, otherwise known as a computer. Initially, she worked on the P-38 Lightning, one of the fastest airplanes at the time that was used extensively during World War II. Problems of instability led to pilot deaths and threatened to end the plane's contributions to the war effort. Mary Ross, as her team called her, was assigned to the team tasked to fix the design. Her research on the effects of pressure on the fighter plane helped solve problems related to high-speed fight and aeroelasticity. The war years involved nearly non-stop work, and she recalled that often at night there were four of us working until 11 p.m. In her spare time, she worked on topics of interplanetary space travel, but she kept those ambitions to herself during wartime. After the war, Lockheed kept her on and sent her to University of California, Los Angeles to gain professional certification in engineering as well as courses in mathematics, aeronautics, and mechanics of missiles and celestial objects. In 1952, Mary Golda Ross joined Skunk Works, a part of the new Lockheed Missiles and Space Company, as a founding engineer, the only woman on the team besides the secretary. It's no wonder that she stumped the panelists on the 1958 episode, What's My Line? TV show. She worked on early space projects, including satellites and missiles, including the submarine-launched Polaris missile and the Agena launch vehicle, which carried military intelligence and civilian payloads to space. The Agena B upper stage, pictured here, was used during the 1960s as an orbital injection vehicle for Midas and other satellites and as an intermediate stage booster for Ranger and early Mariner space probes. Ross developed operational requirements for spacecraft, which set the parameters for the Apollo program, and later she was an author of NASA's Planetary Flight Handbook, making what were probably the first studies of mechanics for missions to Mars and Venus. 
Ross made contributions to the U.S. aerospace industry of immediate importance and lasting impact, though the full impact remains unknown, as much of her work is still classified, but was also foundational. Retiring at the age of 65, Ross opened doors for future generations of women and Native Americans by participating in efforts to encourage their pursuits in STEM fields, including being a member and fellow of the Society of Women Engineers, SWE, and a mentor to others. Here she is presenting an SWE certificate to Akiko Ino in 1993. Ross always said she started with a firm foundation in mathematics and qualities that came down to me from my Indian heritage. At age 96, Mary asked her niece to sew her a traditional Cherokee dress. She had been invited to attend the 2004 opening of the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian, NMAI. Wearing a green calico Cherokee dress, Mary Golda Ross honored the leaders and teachers who formed the lineage before her as American heroes. She stepped out of her electric wheelchair and walked the last yards on the National Mall to enter the new museum. She told her niece, who accompanied her, that one of her only regrets was having spent so much time apart from other Indian people. Ross commented that NMI will tell the true story of the Indian, not just the story of the past, but an ongoing story. She was not only a longtime member of NMAI, she also bequeathed more than $400,000 to the museum towards an endowment. Ross died in 2008, missing her 100th birthday by four months. In 2019, a commemorative $1 coin was minted featuring Ross writing calculations as an Atlas of Gina rocket launches into space. Her legacy continues to inspire the young with books such as this one, written for ages 5 through 9 by Tracy Sorrell and illustrated by Natasha Donovan, entitled Classified. The Secret Career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer. Oklahoma-based artist America Meredith, a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, commemorated Ross in a painting entitled Ad Astra Per Astra, now in the collection of the NMAI. The title is a play on the popular Latin phrase, Per Aspera Ad Astra, through hardships to the stars. Meredith's title translates as to the stars through the stars, which draws from Cherokee cosmology about how spirits long ago lifted young boys into the sky, thereby forming the Pleiades. Meredith depicts Ross standing before a starry night sky with the RM81 Agena to her right and a seven-pointed star, the seven clans of the Cherokee, overhead, symbolizing her dedication to her culture and career. Thank you for joining me today for this walk through the Space Vault. I'm Sue Taylor, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Be sure to follow and like us on Facebook and YouTube, and check us out on nmspacemuseum.org. Better yet, visit us in person in Alamogordo. You never know what's new at the New Mexico Museum of Space History.